We took these three updates, which themselves had gotten quite big, and put them together, and that became Beyond. One of the first things that we announced was virtual reality. It's been this pet project in the team, and we always felt like, you know, that was our dessert, right? There were all these other features that for us were maybe more like, less interesting or, or were more our vegetables that we had to get out of the way, right? Because when you're making a game, there's always little things that are a bit boring, but you know are important. Um, but this was like exciting. And so we kind of held off on doing it for a while. Um, and a couple of the team had been working on virtual reality and they had said, and we had said to ourselves, it will just be, you know, a reasonably direct port. There's, there's nothing wrong in doing. Well, when we sat down and played it, it started to feel really natural. And probably one of the biggest things with it was it made exploring feel more interesting and it made multiplayer feel more interesting. Right? Um, and exploring is such a key part of the game, right? If, if that becomes more fun, then the whole game becomes more fun, right? Uh, so we were really enjoying that. We were like, right, we need to make this bigger. We need more time on this more of the team needs to work on it and more of the team wanted to work on it because they were excited about it. And we started adding support for PSVR, which is a huge undertaking and a huge challenge. Uh, Oculus, Index, um, Vive, kind of supporting all the major headsets and then all the major controllers and things like that as well. And then we started revisiting the game and thinking, wouldn't it be nice if when you sit into the ship, you actually hold a joystick in your hand, you actually hold a throttle. And then once we had done that, which felt really good, it's almost like, you know, when you start cleaning a little bit of a wall and then you realize how dirty the whole rest of the wall is, you're like, oh, we've got to, now we've done that, we've got to make this work better and this work better. So No Man's Sky has a lot of different control schemes. It's got, you know, vehicles, it's got ships, it's got, uh, you know, submarine, it's got a terrain manipulator, base building, planetary traversal, all of these kind of things. And we went back through each one of them and basically remade them from the ground up to work in VR, uh, which was a really fun challenge. It was really fun to do, and we learned a lot doing it. Hopefully that game feels quite natural in VR. We had already added multiplayer to the game, which was a neat thing. Um, but generally people play in kind of four player groups, right? Um, join a lobby together, play as friends together. And generally, you know, it, it represented maybe 10 to 20% of what people did in the game, right? Which is good, it's fine, but we knew that people who played in multiplayer just had way more fun, right? There's something really nice about exploring together kind of thing. Um, and we knew these moments were really cool. So we started thinking about a much more expanded online experience. So that was one of the other strands that we were working on, which is another part of Beyond. Um, so we've started to make it, uh, I don't want to say massively multiplayer, because that has loads of other connotations, right? But we started to make it a lot of players online, right? We started to have uh, much higher player numbers. Um, we started to make it so that everyone is online. What that means is if you go to a planet and somebody is already there, then you will see them, right? If you go to a space station and someone's already there, you'll see them. Uh, and we added a social space to kind of bring everyone together. A bit like if people have played Destiny, a bit like Tower, right? Where whenever you go there, there are people there, there's a hub, right? We upped the player count to 32 players. Depending on platform, um, you'll see 32 players in the Nexus, which is our social space. Um, and you can also see them in the wild as you go and play the game, which is really cool and really changes the game. And it's absolutely crazy to see, you know, in amongst that VR players, right? Just wandering around in their headset, waving to you because they've got control over their hands or whatever. Um, so we have this social space now, which really kind of impacts all parts of the game. Because previously you've been upgrading your ship or you've been upgrading your suit or whatever, and no one could really see that. You're just sort of doing it for yourself. It's suddenly so much more engaging when you're working hard for those things, 
when you can just park up your ship and everyone else can see it, right? Every time you go to the Nexus. And you go to the Nexus a lot, um, if that's what you're into, because uh, there's loads of shops there, lots of new shops, lots of ways to upgrade your character and your ship and your weapon, which are all there, um, which is really kind of neat part of the game. It brings together a load of parts that felt a little bit disparate into more of a whole. Right. If you were a returning player as well, it's great to just kind of come in there and you have, you know, a, a, almost a, a quick restart of where you were. So there's a multiplayer mission board, you go up to it. In that social space, when you do, any of the players around you get a message. You know, Sean is starting a mission, so you can go and join that mission. Then you're in a fire team together. Um, everyone who goes to the Nexus kind of goes in without any loading time. It's just something that they summon in. They fly in and land and they can see other players who are there at the same time, right? Um, so you just start to kind of randomly group up with players, start doing a mission together. Missions are things like, um, you know, bounty hunting or, uh, you know, it's No Man's Sky, so it's things like Archae archaeological missions, digging up bones or taking photos or whatever, right? Uh, and sometimes it's things like base building. And what we find is people are given a little base to build. There's like four of them, they join up into kind of a group or a fire team and they fly down to the planet and they have to start building a base, with, you know, these three things in it. Uh, and they start building a base together and they've never met each other before in their life. And then suddenly they've basically built a little home and they stay together in their group and they start playing together and they keep expanding their base. So that's, that's what we want to do is take some of the best moments of No Man's Sky before of people randomly meeting each other, or randomly building a base together um, and bringing them together, right? And it also really helps bring out that multiplayer aspect because now you don't need three other friends who own the game, right? You can just meet random people easily at any time, just summon in that Nexus, fly in and start playing with them. And then there's this kind of third pillar of the game, which, you know, we told people about virtual reality and we told people about, um, you know, online early on. Uh, and we thought we were doing really well because we told people way more than we normally do before release. Normally we don't say anything until the game's about to come out um, or until an update's about to come out. So we were like, the community will be fine. Um, we'll just tell them that there's three things and here's two of them. Um, and that'll be way more than we've ever told them. That'll be cool. Uh, but of course, they completely fixated on what the third thing was, right? And it's been really interesting to watch uh, for us because everyone has something different that they want that third thing to be. And I think that's really reflective of our community as a whole, that they are all playing the game in different ways. Some people do base building, some people do farming, some people are all about exploring, right? Um, and they often can't even understand each other. They're like, you what, you, you spend all of your time doing missions? Who are you, you know? Uh, it's really fun to watch. Uh, but it's really interesting as a developer, as a designer, that there's so many different ways to play the game and that you're trying to pick things that they would really enjoy, you know, and would mean something to them or resonate. Um, and that third strand that we've been working on is actually to try and do that, right? Luckily, because <laughs> if it was one feature, I don't think it would keep, you know, it would manage to satisfy people because they play it in so many different ways. Luckily, what we've been doing is a lot of features, right? And it is a really large amount. This is our kind of largest update to date. Next was quite large. When people see the patch notes, they'll see that there's about twice as many features as what Next has, which is pretty insane, actually, when I think about it. So there's, there's all sorts of things. If you're into, uh, you know, kind of farming, right now you can farm like plants and things like that. Now you'll be able to farm animals. You'll be able to uh, build like milking machines and tame and milk creatures. You can uh, do creature riding. You can also build much more expanded bases, more than you've ever been able to do before. Um, bases that have much more creativity, so you can have uh, electricity in them, you can have logic, so you can build little mini computers or you can build your own little mad version of Rocket League or something like that, right? You can play in all these things multiplayer. 
And because we've expanded base building, actually a really cool thing is that from the social space, from the nexus, you can share those things in the nexus. And we will feature certain bases and stuff. So people can go to the nexus and just see not just your ship and your loadout and how you look, but they can also see like the base you've built, which is really cool. That really makes you want to make that better. Um, more things we've done to make base building deeper. We've added kind of industrial building parts so people can build miners and extractors and batteries and solar panels and loads of things like that. It's a whole other way to play the game. Um, it's basically just a huge raft of features. There's a new galactic map, a new discovery page. Um, for people who like exploring, there's a new alien word system. Um, you can meet aliens now, NPCs kind of walking around on planets. You can meet them walking around on space stations. They've got new quests and stuff. So we want for people who have played even a thousand hours before, we want it to feel, you know, fresh and deeper for them. You know, that it's trying to bring as many of those disparate elements back together as one kind of cohesive whole and each one feeling like it's valid, like it was there from day one. So that's why we're kind of calling that third pillar version 2.0. We're upping the version number to two and we're trying to wrap together so many updates from the last three years into one whole that we will continue to update from there but it's a really important milestone for us. If you want more from No Man's Sky, why not check out the reveal trailer for Beyond? Or, from last year, you can check out our tiny little documentary we made with Sean Murray about the present, past and future of the game.